Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at configuring syslog server on Cisco routers. Actually, that's kind of a misnomer. We're looking at configuring Cisco routers to use a remote syslog server, and this time we're going to be using Cisco SDM to accomplish that. Before we get started here, if you've already viewed the configuring syslog server on Cisco routers lesson, which concentrated on the CLI, you can go ahead and skip to the second part of this lesson. There's going to be a lot of overlap. The same feature that we're looking at, it's just that this lesson is going to focus on the SDM implementation and unfortunately limitations for this same feature. So the initial slides are going to be the same and going to run over some of the same stuff here. You're welcome to stick around. Uh, this would be good review. Uh, otherwise, just go ahead and pop over to the second part of this lesson and that's where I'll start with the SDM specific features. So what is syslog? Syslog is an industry standard for forwarding log messages from a device to a remote server so that that server can be the repository for these logs. It says up here it allows for the separation of the software that generates the log messages. In our case that's going to be Cisco IOS from the system that stores messages which will be whatever type of syslog server that we're going to be using. Syslog is, as you might have guessed from that description, a client server protocol. Uh, it uses UDP. It can be configured for TCP. We're not going to go through that today. You can do that if you want connection oriented syslogging but on a default Cisco box is going to use UDP port 514. One thing to keep in mind from a security aspect is that the data is sent in clear text. This is outside the scope of this lesson but you can add an SSL wrapper to this to add a little bit of additional security. Syslog started out in the Unix environment uh, so a lot of companies will still just simply set up a Unix box as their Syslog server because the Syslog daemon runs on that box and it's a, it's a cheap and easy um, syslog server it has a lot of functionality so there's nothing wrong with that I've worked in a couple of places where that's basically what our syslog server was just a Unix or you know usually Linux box and what syslog is generally used for is computer system management and security auditing and we'll touch on that uh, some more at the end of this presentation system logging messages or syslog messages or system error messages or just logs or sometimes they're traps error messages whatever you want to refer to them as are controlled controlled by the logging process in iOS and that process will distribute these messages to various destinations based on the configuration on your Cisco device. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on the differences between these because there is another lesson that does concentrate on that. I will tell you that the first two here, the ones that are conveniently in blue, are the ones we're going to look at today because those are the ones that you can configure from the SDM. So logging buffer, that is your internal memory buffers. So on a router, if you ever do a show log log and you see the messages there that's logging buffer basically logging host I'll come back to in a second because that's the one we're going to spend the most amount of time looking at today uh, logging console and logging monitor won't go into this too deeply other than to just tell you that buffered console and monitor are all local to your device. So these options are for messages that are just going to stay on your device let's say Cisco router in this case whereas logging host is you know true syslogging I guess as per our definition on the last slide in that it's going to send these syslog messages from your device to a remote host and the remote host is going to be the syslog server. So you're probably looking at this slide and saying hey wait a second I'm getting fooled here I want to learn how to do this on the SDM which is GUI based I don't need to know any of this iOS configuration. This slide is in here simply to show you how ridiculously simple it is to enable logging to remote syslog server on Cisco routers. I say Cisco routers this includes switches and other devices but since SDM only works with Cisco routers I'm going to concentrate on that so don't let the verbiage throw you off. So basically to enable this you, it's just one command it's logging host followed by either the uh, IP address of the remote host or the host name if your device is running DNS or recognizes if your device recognizes the DNS host name. Now you see a ton of options here, don't worry about this. Uh, SDM is really not going to give you the ability to configure any of this. It's really just going to configure this one command and then a uh, couple other options here. Actually I think only one other option. This slide is just in there just to show you how simple this is to turn on. 